Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> On behalf of the NEAG School of Education, I am pleased to welcome you to our Sunday undergraduate commencement ceremony, the University of Connecticut's 136th commencement address. Thank you for joining us today and to celebrate the achievements of our students. My name is Rich Schwab, and I have the honor of serving as dean of the NEAG School of Education. We as educators are thrilled for you, our graduates, in reaching this point in your academic career. But before we begin, I'm going to go off script to start with. I know I'm a, a parent, and my child is graduating from college a week from today, actually, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm very curious to find out what he's learned, because I've paid a lot of money, and we've, <laughs> we've done a lot of things to help him get through school. So I am going to demonstrate to you how smart your, these young men and women are and what they learned at UConn. So all the graduates, please stand. Now, what's, if you didn't learn this, you are not getting your degree today. <laughs> all right. going to show you that there are future educators and sports management people out there, graduates, that also learn something new at the drop of the hat. So we're going to do something today to honor the most important people in our lives. Who would that be? What day is today? Mother's, Mother's Day. Okay, let's see if they can learn this. Happy Mother's Day. OK, now next, would all the friends, relatives, spouses, and partners of our graduates please stand? I got a good one to teach you. No, all we're going to do is we're going to have these graduates and all of us on the stage thank you with a round of applause. Finally, would the faculty please stand? I am very proud of the accomplishments of our faculty. They are nationally and internationally recognized scholars in their respective fields and dedicated to working with our students to produce the best researchers, school teachers, principals, superintendents, and sports management professionals for the state of Connecticut and across the nation. Please join me in recognizing their contributions to your success. Thank you. We have before us today about 130 candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. They spent the past four years in our teacher education or sports management programs. To get, every, to get things started, would everyone please stand for the singing of the national anthem by soloist Allison Savage, a junior music education major. Allison, please come to the stage. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the light 
Great universities do not function without dedicated leadership and support from many individuals who believe in the importance of education. Now let me introduce our platform party. Please stand as I read your name. We may ask the audience to uh, please ask all of you hold your applause until uh, I've introduced them all. First is our president of the NEAG School of Education Alumni Society, Dr. Lou Ando. Dr. Del Sigley, professor and head of the Department of Educational Leadership. Dr. Jennifer Bruning, professor and head of the Department of Educational Leadership. Dr. Mary Ann Doyle, professor and head of the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. Dr. Sandy Shafulius, professor and associate dean for research. Dr. Casey Cobb, professor and associate dean for academic affairs. Dr. Dorothea Agassinopoulos, executive director of the teacher education program. Ms. Harriet Sanford, President and CEO of the NEA Foundation and our commencement speaker. Ms. Carly Mooney, our student commencement speaker, and Dr. Jackie Van Hees, Associate Professor and our lead marshal. Thank you for all joining us today. Now, before we get started with the ceremony, I would like to offer some brief remarks about the NEAG School of Education. We continue to stand out as one of the premier schools of education in the nation. This year, U.S. News & Report ranked the NEAG School at 21 among all gr public graduate schools of education in the country. We also have three specialty programs within the school that are ra ranked in the top 20 nationally, including all schools and colleges uh, in the country. Those are special education, number 14, ed psych, number 16, and educational administration, number 18. At the same time, our alumni make us proud year after year, from school teachers and principals to school counselors and sports management professionals. Our alumni are recognized for being the best in their chosen discipline. I'll give you just a couple of examples, all highlights from just this academic year. This past fall, elementary school principal and triple NEAG alum, Desi Nesbitt, class of 01, 02, and 09, won the prestigious Milken Award, Educator Award. Vanessa Montorsi, class of 04, was named Connecticut School Counselor of the Year for 214. Connecticut Technical High School System Superintendent Dr. Nivia L. Torres was named the 2014 Connecticut Latina Citizen of the Year. Alum Cara Quinn, class of 3 and 4, was named the 2015 Connecticut Teacher of the Year. Dr. Janet Robinson, class of 06, was named the 2014 Connecticut Superintendent of the Year. And Alicia Bowman, class of 01, 02, and 08, the principal at Westwood's Upper Elementary School in Farmington, Connecticut, was named the 2015 National Distinguished Principal of the Year. Just as a side note, I, um, I gave the degrees to all these folks <laughs> over the years. You, this could be you that we're reading in a few years, and I expect it will be. Again, each of these honors have been bestowed on these NEAG alum within the past academic year alone. Suffice it to say that there is a real sense of excitement here today because we know exactly what kind of bright future lies ahead for our graduates. So, again, we cannot wait to see you and read your name in the coming years. So now it's time for me to introduce Carly Mooney our student speaker. Speaking of our exceptional students, I'd like to now turn the podium over to the student commencement speaker, Ms. Carly Mooney. Carly is a senior sports management major and native of Killingworth, Connecticut. She has spent her four undergraduate years at UConn serving as the student manager for the national championship women's basketball team. Go Huskies! Around here, as you may be aware, we are often known to say Huskies forever, and Carly is no exception. This fall, she'll be right back here in the NEAC school to take on a master's degree in adult learning, and she'll be serving as a graduate assistant, again, for the UConn women's basketball team. Clearly, she's a Husky through and through, and we are very proud of her. Carly? Good morning, everyone. Welcome family, friends, honored guests, esteemed university staff and faculty, and most importantly, welcome to the members of the class of 2015, future educators, future sport management professionals, and future game changers. 
Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to again recognize all of the mothers in attendance. Your love and guidance has been more valuable than any class or textbook. Thank you for all that you do, and happy Mother's Day. To borrow a line from NBA All-Star Kevin Durant, you are the real MVPs. <laughs> and to today's graduates, congratulations to all of you. Each and every one of you in attendance has something to be proud of and an achievement to celebrate. Today would not be possible without the help of so many. And so to our families, our professors, our mentors, and our friends, in case we have forgotten to adequately say it over the past four years, thank you. Your emotional, physical, financial, and academic support has allowed each of us to be here on the cusp of reaching a major life goal, graduating from the University of Connecticut and the NEAG School of Education. The NEAG School of Education is known as one of the nation's top education schools. You are sitting here not by coincidence or a stroke of luck. You did not decide on a major that would be easy or a career field that was vague. You chose to be here. You allowed your passion to lead you. You were hand-selected by some of the finest faculty in the country to enter this esteemed program. But now the question is, what comes next? This is not a question to hide from, but rather a question to boldly and honestly answer. Even if that question is, I don't know, and not knowing is OK. We were posed the same question upon high school graduation and most likely had a very similar answer. A little over four years ago, I was a high school senior who knew exactly what I wanted, and that was to attend UConn. No, I'm not just saying that for speech writing convenience. I knew that this was where I belonged. I needed to be a Husky. So as many of you may have done, I applied early action. A few weeks later, I received an email stating that I had been deferred. Obviously, I was upset, but I was so boldly confident in the fact that UConn was where I was meant to be that I honestly didn't consider not getting accepted. A few agonizingly slow months had passed, and I received another email. This one stating I had been waitlisted. For the first time, I allowed myself to consider for a moment that my dream of being a Husky was not meant to be. However, it was only for a moment. The next day, I sent an email to the UConn admissions department, and I laid it all on the line, a, ha a Hail Mary, if you will. I bared my heart and expressed my own excitement and goals for the future. I capped the email off with a ridiculously enthusiastic subject heading of, please, written in all caps, I'm serious, I'm serious, I have the email, <laughs> written in all caps with no less than five extra E's. A bold statement about my passion for this university? Absolutely. Less, less than a week later, I received a phone call from the UConn admissions department offering me acceptance. I'm telling you this story from four years ago because it has served as a reminder to me to never let anyone tell you no, and it should do the same for all of you. You must fearlessly commit to your goals and pursue them with a relentlessness that others cannot or are not willing to match. This is something that our 10-time national champion women's basketball team does better than anyone else. As Dean Schwab previously mentioned, I've had the incredible opportunity to work with the women's basketball team throughout my four years here as an undergrad. And so I hear a lot of what the coaches and the players say to each other. Chris Daly, associate head coach, a distinguished NEAG alumna and the most passionate teacher I have ever met, and I completely mean that, reminds the team every day to commit to their goals, urging them not to do things the easy way, but to do them the right way. She's constantly repeating the phrase, this isn't a timeout, chasing the girls around, whenever she feels their intensity or effort wavering. Her words are to remind the team that there is no such thing as taking a break from working hard. Her message is important. You can't call a timeout in the classroom or in life. It will not be easy. Devoting your whole self to your ambition should not be easy. But if you are able to do it, you can achieve what you want, you can make your dreams a reality, and you will inspire and excite those around you. But here's the key. It's on all of you. You must set goals, get excited for them, and refuse to take no, or in my case, a waitlisted email for an answer. It's your life. Yours alone, so don't let it happen, make it happen. Do not allow yourself to simply go through the motions. Live, create your experiences, and soak them in. After the national championship game a few weeks ago, one of the players was asked what it was in particular that she was most excited for. She instantly responded without hesitation, instinctively replying, I'm just excited for life. And that's just it. You have to get excited. It's about living your life and committing to your dreams in an honest, active and intentional way. This is something that we can all do. So today we graduate, we celebrate, and we live. And tomorrow, 
What happens tomorrow is completely up to all of you. So change the classroom, change the game, and change the world. Congratulations, class of 2015. Thank you, Carly. Terrific job. In a few short minutes, you will transition from being students of, in the NEAG School of Education to being alumna and alumni of the NEAG School of Education. We've invited Dr. Lou Ando, the president of the NEAG School Alumni Society and a UConn alum who earned his PhD from us in 1979 to welcome you as new alumni. Dr. Ando retired after a long, successful career as Bureau Chief with the Connecticut Department of Children and Families, and in addition, serving as President of the NEAG School of Education Alumni Society. He is currently an independent mental health consultant. Lou, please come to the podium. Thank you, Lou. Morning. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here today to congratulate this class of 2015. And so on behalf of the governing board of the NEAG Alumni Society, congratulations to you. Uh, your hard work has paid off. Parents, families, friends, faculty, congratulations to you as well. The fact that all of these young men and women are here today is a testament to your support and hard work as well. Now, I have to say that for me, one of the things that I found about myself is that the longer a speech lasts, the less I remember about what was said. And so, looking around, I think some of you have probably uh, have the same uh, experience. And so, I have a message for you today that I think is important, and one that I hope you'll remember, so I'll be very brief. I only want to take about two minutes of your time. I'm here to talk with you about the NEAG Alumni Society. With your graduation today, you've joined an elite group. Not just graduates of a prominent university, but as alumni of the university, you join the UConn family. Students today and Husky Forever is not just a phrase that was kind of made up by some uh, marketing guru. It defines your membership in a family with over 230,000 members all over the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we may have that occasional uncle or aunt that's a little off center, but for the most part, this is a group that you can be extremely proud to be a member of. One of the best ways to make use of membership in this elite group is through membership in the Yukon Alumni Association. You should know that membership in the association automatically makes you a member of the School of Education Alumni Society. The society has two overriding goals. First and foremost is to engage alumni uh, and secondly to support students. For nearly 18 years we've been working with the Alumni Association to offer programs that keep alum alumni connected to the university and to support students through academic and social events and by offering scholarships for those going on for advanced degrees. Just this past year, we were uh, pleased and, and lucky enough to be able to create an endowed scholarship, which means that we'll be able to do this uh, in perpetuity, and as long as the university exists for forever. So whether you're just beginning your career, trying to decide what you want to do, whether you're going on to higher education, your membership in the society will keep you connected to the university through activities and through information. It'll keep you updated on what's happening at your alma mater, and it provides a means for you to stay in touch with other alum. So please consider getting involved. Before I close, there is one additional thing that I'd like to do, uh, and that's to ask you to um, help me offer a special thanks to Dean Schwab. And, and I have to say, uh, I have to say I don't know where he's sitting. But uh, I have to say that I don't, don't know him very well. I mean, uh, when I did my work here at UConn, he was probably in the sixth grade. And, and, uh, but, I've, but I've worked with him over the past year, give or take. Um, I know his reputation. I know his commitment to the students of the university as well as the School of Education. And his, his uh, commitment and his dedication is truly exceptional. And so before I leave and close, I really want us to just thank him for his uh, continued support. Thanks, Rich. And so finally, and I told you I'd take less than two minutes, um, I want to congratulate the graduates again. I want to thank the uh, faculty, family, friends, parents, and I want to say welcome to the family. Thank you. Thank you 
Thank you, Lou. Our Alumni Society does an incredible job of supporting the NEAG School and its alums by raising money for scholarships, mentoring undergraduates, and sponsoring important events within the NEAG School. Next, we would like to take a moment to formally recognize one of our NEAG School of Education faculty members who has been honored this year with a University Teaching Award. I would like to invite Dr. Del Siegley, professor and head of the Department of Educational Psychology, to present this award. Each year, the University of Connecticut honors a select number of faculty members across the institution with its most prestigious award recognizing excellence in teaching at UConn. We are honored to announce that Dr. Lisa Sanetti, who serves here at the NEAG School as an Associate Professor of School Psychology in the Department of Educational Psychology, has been named a University of Connecticut Teaching Fellow. She is, in fact, the 12th faculty member from the NEAG School to receive this prestigious honor. Dr. Sanetti has proven herself as an exceptional teacher and mentor. She is dedicated. She is described by her colleagues with such words as caring, visionary, and superstar. Meanwhile, her teacher evaluations, teaching evaluation scores are outstanding in every course. And in fact, numerous students have been known to say that she is one of the best teachers they have had at UConn. Her students call her organized, supportive, thorough, and one of the most dedicated teachers and mentors I have met. One of these students admits, Dr. Sonetti's passion is contagious. On more than one occasion, I have actually been disappointed to reach the end of class. It is our pleasure to honor and to present to Dr. Lisa Sonetti the 2015-2016 University of Connecticut Teaching Fellow Award. Congratulations. Jackie? <clears throat> it is an academic cut. Oh. oh, sorry. It is an academic custom that those who have excelled in science, letters, the arts, or who have served humanity through writing and their acts should be appropriately honored. Today, the university is to award one honorary doctorate at this ceremony. The citation will be presented and degree will be conferred by the Dean of the NEAG School of Education, Dr. Richard Schwab. Thank you, Jackie. Harriet Sanford, you have demonstrated an unwavering dedication to public education reform, the arts, and the strengthening of communities. Your visionary leadership and ongoing work to help prepare each of America's children to thrive in a rapidly changing world serves as a particularly remarkable example to our faculty and students. Serving as President and Chief Executive Officer of the NEA Foundation based in Washington, D.C., you have led the work of the Foundation since 2005. The NEA Foundation remains committed to supporting the collaborative efforts of public school educators, their unions, school districts, and communities to focus on learning conditions that improve student performance. An alumna of UConn, you earned a master's degree in public administration from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences in 1979. You began your career as a public school classroom teacher, which led to a senior executive career spanning nearly 30 years, including 24 years spent directing such nonprofit public organizations as the Arts and Science Council in Charlotte, North Carolina, and the Fulton County Arts Council in Georgia. You have written extensively on issues of reform, importing your wisdom to educators, administrators, academics, parents, and the public. You continue to stand out as a trailblazer in public education reform. Devoted to the betterment of society through access to quality education, cultural competency, and the arts. Meanwhile, in directing the course for many organizations that serve the public good, you continually, <clears throat> you continually exemplify 
the le level of leadership and world citizenship we aspire to instill in our graduates. You have also served as the architect behind an innovative partnership that we are bridging divides between constellations of educational organizations. Here in Connecticut, you stepped forward as one of the early supporters and advocates for the NEAG School of Education's Compact Schools Program, supporting our vision for a partnership with urban communities and school systems, ultimately leading to reform initiatives in Hartford, Bridgeport, and numerous other urban communities across the state of Connecticut. The trajectory of your career, as well as your dedication to public service and devotion to enhancing arts education and cultural understanding are laudable models for UConn student, students who endeavor to advance in their fields and make significant contributions to society. For all you have done, the University of Connecticut today offers its sincere gratitude for your tireless efforts. Harriet Sanford, for your role as distinctive leader, education advocate, and global citizen, it is our honor to bestow upon you today, the 10th day of May, 2015, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honors causa. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the University of Connecticut, and in accordance with the procedures and regulations of the university, it is my ple special pleasure to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the appropriate rights, responsibilities, and distinctions pertaining thereto. It almost leaves you speechless. Um, I think I actually graduated in this very same space in 1979, and I never imagined I'd be here for this purpose. I am humbled and honored, proud, proud Husky girl. Um, so thank you all, parents, faculty, families, and soon-to-be graduates. It's my honor to be here at the University of Connecticut. And I have to give a shout out to the moms. I'm a mom, and so go moms. Um, I received my Master's of Public Administration from UConn many years ago, but what few people know is that I was also on the undefeated women's basketball team. The club team, that is. <laughs> and I was known as the defense queen as I only shot the ball once over two seasons, <laughs> but stole the ball a good deal and then pass it along as quickly as possible. So UConn holds many positive memories beyond the academic experience. But Yukon and I have both come a long way since the late 70s. I'm no longer afraid to shoot the ball, and Yukon's academic, academic ranking is at its all-time high. And the basketball teams, well, what can I say? They're the best in the country, making Yukon an ideal place to learn no matter your course of study. So it's a pleasure to return today to talk to you about something really dear to my heart, something that has driven me for most of my working life, and that is teaching. While I realize a number of you are not education majors, much of what I have to say should resonate with you because where education goes, this country goes. Teaching matters. You hear that a lot, but it's true. It matters, and so do the children we teach, every single child. For many in the audience today, you've put in time the hard work, and at times, I'm sure, a little bit of tears as you've worked on this. But if you do not believe in the immense learning power of each and every student, no matter what the circumstances, neither you nor their students will be successful. Finding and nurturing that power is what teaching is all about, and it can help you rejuvenate your commitment to teaching at every phase of your career. New research on brain science uses words such as mindset, grit, resilience, to drive home the idea that attitudes matter and that given the lowest performing students, they can even turn the page and, and succeed. These words are all important, but I'd like to offer another word, belief. As a teacher, you must believe in yourself, in the power of education to change lives, and in what your students can do. 
I'm standing before you as the daughter of a barely educated son of a sharecropper who married a poor Irish woman from a family steeped in a stubborn intolerance of anyone with brown skin during an era when both were told they could not marry each other. My parents were not to be stopped by unfair laws or norms, so they chose their own way forward. They wed in 1952. In my family, the idea of being in control of your own destiny was not a topic for debate. It was a belief. My father had faced daunting challenges. The Indiana Ku Klux Klan in his youth, racial bias in the military, and at times, illegal treatment at the hands of others. It was not lost on me that if my own father had succeeded and created a thriving family despite such challenges, whatever challenges I faced would be small in comparison. In short, belief was a value my father lived, and so did his children. That belief propelled me through school, from my underfunded elementary school, through high school, and on to my forward-thinking college, where lived experiences were valued as much as any lecture. Everywhere I went, I knew I had to do two things, give my best effort and believe in myself. And for the most part, the rest would take care of itself. But then I began teaching, and I quickly realized that not every child was so lucky. In many ways, the disparities have only gotten worse over time. Our tax structure gives students in certain zip codes more opportunities than others, more resources, better paid teachers, and more opportunities that spark lifelong learning. The lack of these things makes the journey for those children harder, but no less important. But the difference isn't all about funding and opportunity and equities. For some, it is so often purely one thing, belief. I recently read a book by the New York Times columnist Charles Blow, and I had to fight back tears as he described his education and the one moment when a teacher recognizes his ability. Charles writes about how his own belief and vision of himself was utterly changed when one teacher made a chance for Mark and recognized him as a young scholar worthy of attention. He wrote, it was the first time that I felt a teacher cared about me, truly saw me, and believed in me. I felt life stir in me. I'd always known that I was smart, but when the teacher at Ringgold had treated me like I wasn't, I lived down to their low expectations. After that day, Charles said he never got another bad grade, and more importantly, the trajectory of his life changed, all because someone believed in him. You see, belief is the most important gift you can give all of your students. And those we empower to teach, who like you have gained our trust, have a clear responsibility to be aware of each of our own implicit biases, which do not leave us. We must constantly examine ourselves to be sure that our beliefs, ingrained in us through a lifetime of experiences, do not in any way interfere with our ability to believe in others. We're all here as educators because we know that every child is capable of learning and succeeding on some level. But when we quietly celebrate when children of color get over the cusp and score proficient on a standardized test, but do not excel, we're letting those students down. Persistent achievement gaps in K through 12, followed by high remediation rates in college, particularly for first time and minority students, speak volumes about the irreparable damage done by low expectations. Every teacher is a leader responsible for setting the norms and standards in their classroom. We must be bold and catch ourselves when we fall short and also speak out about the issues of race and poverty in and out of school. We must do whatever is necessary to help our students succeed to eliminate any deficiency they face and to show our students that they matter. The path to equal opportunity for all is an important chapter in our history as a nation that remains unfinished, and I'm asking you to help write it, all of you, no matter what career path you have chosen. I've said to you that teaching matters, and so do teachers. This is a time of great change in America's schools and classrooms. In your studies and your clinical experiences, you've undoubtedly gotten a taste of the rapidly changing state of the education system. Over time, you'll see the efforts to improve education, like history, move like a pendulum. 
If you stay in the classroom long enough, there's a good chance that the things we're spending most of our time on now will, will be replaced by other priorities. And if you stay in the classroom a really long time, you'll see those priorities shift back again. I've seen the pendulum swing in a few times in my life. In the 60s, we saw a push for greater equity and relevance in learning. In the 70s, we saw the back to basics movement, trying to address the problem that Johnny can't read. In the 80s, a nation at risk, four states to raise standards and improve, and improve every aspect of education, ensuring that students were gaining solid core knowledge in key subjects. Later, that effort morphed into the standards movement that brought with it more testing and accountability. But I forgot one important thing, the importance of teaching. Today, we're trying to ensure that students have greater knowledge that is relevant and meaningful to them and can be used in any context. This is promising and is up to teachers to make sure that it happens. Unlike what has happened all too often over the past decades, teachers must shape and not be shaped by these efforts. What you do in your classrooms will make all the difference, and you should not shy away from being bold and outspoken. Know that your voice is important. Know that it is vital for real change, and know that at times you may have to raise it to make sure you're heard. Approach your teaching with the same mindset you have instilled in your students, with a critical eye towards problem solving, an elaborate, a collaborative partnership, and with a focus on bigger issues in the community. Yes, teaching matters, but community matters too. As we talk about change, I'm happy to confirm that the era of teachers working alone in classrooms with the door shut, it's over. As you begin your career as an educator, you'll have more opportunities to learn from and be supported by your peers than any other time in history. Before you know it, you'll be immersed in more faculty meetings, team meetings, data meetings, working groups, professional learning communities, and cohorts everywhere. All these meetings could be daunting, and at times they may feel like a diversion from what you're doing in the classroom, but I can assure you they're not. In the past, too many teachers felt isolated, completely alone with the enormous task of learning to teach. The classroom door is now open. And to be successful, you also need to be open to your peers, your students, and also the larger community in which you teach. Today, too much of the talk of educational reform, of reshaping our schools and teaching and learning, we've ignored the outside. As a teacher, you do so at your own peril. You're also missing an enormous opportunity to grow, receive support, and feel connected to the children and communities you serve, and for them to feel connected to you. When I was a teacher, it helped that many of us lived in the same communities we taught. We also shopped at the same grocery stores, gravitated to the same parks, and volunteered for programs that mattered to all. I was emotionally and spiritually connected. It felt right. I hope you'll follow that path. And now you're about to write your first chapter, and I don't want to stand in your way. But as I bring my comments to a close, I want to share the thoughts of a number of seasoned educators across the nation who I've worked with in recent years. Some are friends, some have won awards, but all have dedicated their lives to their students. And I asked them what advice they would give people entering the field. Much of what they have to say applies across many sectors, and here's what they offered. One wrote, it's not what we know, it's what we're willing to learn that makes great teachers. Another said, make the custodian your friend, and if you're an elementary teacher, no glitter, ever. <laughs> One said, keep a bad day file, put every note, hand-drawn picture, good observation, class photo, fun photo in there, and then read it on those days when you wonder why. One began by saying smile, and the advice just kept coming. Your students have a life outside of the classroom. Welcome it in. In my 24 years of teaching, I have found that what parents really want is to hear how much you value and like their children. See the world. Many of your students will only see the world through your eyes. Your students will remember your heart more than irrelevant information in a textbook. Love them, every one of them, unconditionally. Kids won't remember that you taught them about factoring poly polynomials, spelling, or how to conjugate verbs. 
they will remember how you made them feel. And I'll leave you with the comment of a trusted friend, and she said this, if I, can't, if I can tell new teachers one thing, it would be this, be fierce. The profession might not immediately strike you as one that requires ferocity, but it does. It takes fierce to battle your own self-doubt when you're the only one who seems to know that good enough is just not good enough for your students. Excellence is what you're after, and you're not going to let anyone or anything stand between your students and excellence. Bring fears to the table every time. You're going to need it. Be gentle, kind, caring with your students, but be fierce about their education. As you write your own chapter, you're becoming a part of a bigger story, the story of our communities, our children's lives, our futures. You've had a great education and preparation for great careers. Believe in yourself. Believe in your students and believe in the people you work with. And above all, and this applies to each of you, be fierce in everything you do. You are our best hope for the next generation. I wish you more than luck. Thank you. Thank you. Your thoughtful remarks and for joining us today and coming up here. I fiercely am excited about <laughs> every, <clears throat> excuse me, everything you said. That was, a, that was a wonderful speech. I really appreciate it. Now it's uh, that favorite time of year. For deans, we get to present our candidates. Uh, Dr. Cobb. We will now present candidates for degrees. Would the marshals please take their places? I would like to invite our associate dean, which I've just done, Dr. Cobb, to the podium. He will be reading the names. We will begin with the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree from our sports management program. Carly Mooney. Greg Davis. Javier Berrigan. William Noisett. Connor Bachman. Amar Singh. Robert Cole. Jesse Shamansky. <laughs> Brittany Larkin. <laughs> Kiana Sue Powers. <laughs> Ready? We'll proceed with our integrated bachelor's master teacher preparation program candidates in elementary and secondary education. Ashley Springsteen. Giselle Garcia. Taylor 
Garboski. Julie Grossman. Kelly Velez. Christina Devekis. <laughs> Philip Case. <laughs> Jay Garish. Megan Sienna Brown. Elisa Marola. Brennan McCormick. Chris Roussaw. Sean Obriski. Mike Trong. Audrey Kelly. Thomas Sullivan. Andrew Catanese. Jennifer Moore. Evan Rooney. Gabriela Benitez. Heather Elizabeth Grove. James Danello. Kaylee Cupstis. Jacqueline Rankin. Lara Cherkesian. Rachel Tangard. Haley Ullinger. <laughs> Colleen Barnhart. <laughs> Cassandra Doms. Olivia Patrizzi. Yeah. 
Madison Lippman. Emily Handel. Sarah Ray. Erica Yaglowski. Julia Latchett. Michelle Byer. Brittany Gard. Catherine Maffa. James Follett. Tracy Ann Lafayette. Stephanie Oriala. <laughs> Caroline Katzman. <laughs> Caroline Thompson. Victoria Breen. <laughs> Rebecca Pite. <laughs> Melissa Scarborough. Emily Ferguson. Erica Sheltry. Lauren Lukasik. Jacqueline Barrill. Christina Eberhardt. You got it. Elise Beaupre. Nora Green. That's a hard to keep on. That's a hard to keep on. Brianna Petruccio. <laughs> Rachel Cerruti. Okay. 
Julie Barbas. Aaron Holden. Kelsey Jansen. Jill Griswold. Noel Visconti. Gabriella Tujak Weiss. Caroline. Caroline Smith. Caitlin Costello. Krista Hespeler. Emily Anderson. Stephanie Rizzi. Nikki Baldino. Orlando Valentin, Jr. Daniel Bronco. Melanie Blaine. Cindy Shen. Nicole Willette. Nicole Sylvester. Lauren Smaglis. Daniel Arndy. Laura Collins. <laughs> Nicholas Champ. <laughs> Rachel Amento. Lindsay Walk. <laughs> Alexandra White. Yeah, Alex. <laughs> Brittany Handel.
Corey Delorge. Sarah Goss. Emily Gothier. Amy Christensen. Allison LaBear. Tara Briodi. Ashley Bernardo. Hillary Gannon. Caitlin Murphy. Emma Chaplinski. Christina Di Giuseppe. Sarah Falsetti. Cody Brown. Kathleen Marie Cummings. Carolyn Dorothy Pearson. Deanna Freed. Valerie Rose Stickles. Patrick Slattery. Matthew Roshansky. Thank you. We will now proceed with our integrated bachelor's, master's, teacher preparation program candidates in special education. Ann Taylor. <laughs> Lauren Poirier. <laughs> Kate Mary Collins. Catherine Andrews. Grace Healy. Samantha Schofield.
Sarah Pohorlak. Sharon Kim. Tara Conway. Jory Lynn Predmore. Emily Sherwill. Catherine Hall. Rachel Lee Nowak. Bailey Morgan Mushin. <laughs> Melissa Oberlander. <laughs> Jessica Munson. Sarah Hodge. It is with great pride I'd like to recognize an impressive number of our students who are graduating with academic distinction. These students have performed at the highest level and represent the best tradition of academic excellence. I now ask our students with the following designations to stand. Babbage Scholars. Babbage Scholars Awards are presented to students who earned a 4.0 grade average based on at least 12 credits each semester for both spring and fall 2014. New England Scholars, please stand. New England Scholar Awards New England Scholar Awards are presented to students who earned a 3.7 grade point average or higher based on the last 12 credits each semester for both spring and fall of 214. University Scholars. All right. Graduation as a University Scholar is one of the highest academic honors the University bestows on undergraduate students. No more than 30 University Scholars are selected each year. UConn Honors Scholars. The UConn Honors Scholars must maintain an average GPA of three. <laughs> UConn Honors Scholars must maintain a minimum GPA of 3.4, have completed an honors thesis, and a minimum of 12 credits in honors courses. The honors program is highly selective representing only 10% of the University of Connecticut's undergraduate population. Will all of those scholars that were recognized be standing now so we can all give one round of applause? Look at that, isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> I 
Okay, now here's the time you've all been waiting for. Will all the candidates for degrees please stand? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the University of Connecticut, and in accordance with the procedures and regulations of the university, I confer upon you the Bachelor of Science degree in which you have been presented in the 136th commencement of the university. I charge you now to assume fully the responsibilities of your new status, to enlarge upon the foundations of knowledge which you have acquired, to take upon yourselves the obligations of an enlarged vision, and to seek to do your fair share of the work of this world. You are now NEAG School of Education graduates and alumni. Congratulations. All right. I like that energy. Hey, we can all sit down for one more minute here. We're almost finished. What a wonderful way to start the day. In closing, there are a few things I'd like to mention. First, we have many people to thank today. The families who are here today, especially all the moms who celebrate today as well. What a great Mother's Day present. One more time. Thank you. Our new graduates, they make all of us and will make all of us very proud. Our talented faculty and dedicated professional staff, the offices of the President and Provost for the support, and the citizens of the state of Connecticut who are such a great supporters of this great university. I would also like to extend our thanks to our commencement speakers, Ms. Harriet Sanford and Ms. Carly Mooney for their thoughtful words this morning. Graduates, we are very proud of you and what you have accomplished. Please, re please remember to thank those who have helped you on this journey. On behalf of the entire NEAG School of Education family, congratulations. Before we start our recessional, I would also like to extend thanks to everyone involved in making our commencement ceremony today a memorable one. Our faculty who are serving as marshals with a special thanks to lead marshal, Dr. Jackie Van Heest. Thank you, Jackie. This fabulous Community School of Arts ceremony, ceremonial brass uh, from the School of Fine Arts. Fabulous job, as always. For our next American Idol, I'm sure, champion, our soloist, Allison Savage. Fabulous job. Remember, Allison, to donate to the Dean's Fund when you get that <laughs> award. Our singer from the State Department, our signer from the State uh, Connecticut's Commission on the Deaf and Hearing Impaired. The members of the NEAG School Commencement Committee have worked diligently to make the arrangements for today. And I also like to thank Gary Yastis and the fine staff here at Jorgensen for all of their help and guidance. So for all of those, let's just give a round of applause for those folks. Our ceremony now concludes the recessional of our faculty and graduates who will march directly back to the Gentry Building. Uh, we ask that the audience remain seated until the recessional has been completed. And we'd like to invite everyone here back to the Gentry Building, which is just down the road, for a celebration and for some refreshments. Thank you and have a wonderful day.